Okay. Hello, everyone. So this is going to be my first take at um, going through a Stardew Valley journey, really. Um, a modded playthrough um, featuring really the um, the Rathodax mod kit. Um, I haven't seen a whole lot of playthroughs or let's plays using this mod kit. There is one in particular, uh, Meraki. Um, but she hasn't really uploaded in some time, which has been kind of a little upsetting. Um, I'm sure that there's um, many valid reasons why. But I have been missing seeing, you know, this feature playthrough that's a little bit different from the ones that you typically see. So um, that's what's going to be featured here is just kind of um, really immersing ourselves in what the Rathodax playthrough has to offer. So before we actually get into the gameplay, I'm going to show you kind of what mod pack I have that I'm going to be using for this playthrough. Uh, most of it is cosmetic, but I do have a few quality of life ones that for me in particular just suit my play style. Um, I've spent a lot of time modding and, you know, I've gone down the rabbit holes of using the tractor mod at 12 speed, yada yada and whatnot. Um, but I've also gone the opposite way of doing a playthrough with a 5% profit margin. So I've kind of seen um, both ends of the spectrum here. And I'm still trying to find my niche as we all are. That's why you're probably watching this video is to get um, some inspiration of some mods that you want to try out. So hopefully this can give you a little bit of insight into whether, you know, the Raffidax kit is something that you'd be interested in or not. Um, so I'm not going to go over every one of these in detail, really. Just kind of maybe a little bit of... Um, discussion as to why um, or if they're not important at all like for example like the first four here are all cosmetic mods which you'll see in action as we go along the better greenhouse mod here I will be using a greenhouse mod this basically repl replicates if you're using uh, stardew expanded so it's just a greenhouse that fits nine iridium sprinklers and then it has eight tree plots on the left and right sides that's all um, the bigger backpack mod just adds an extra row to the bottom, so it's going to be a 48 slot backpack instead of just your typical 36 slot. I didn't want to get anything too crazy. I will be using Fashion Sense to kind of canonically set up a character here. The custom cask and custom crystallarium mods are part of either Raffidax or another mod that I'm going to be pairing with Raffidax, but I'm not intentionally going to be using these for, you know, duplicating prismatic shards or reducing the aging time of cask. I don't know. They were just a requirement for these mod kits. Um, this is a framework mod, um, Daisy Nico's tile sheets. Then we have destroyable bushes. This is important for me because I do like to have a little bit of aesthetics in my playing and bushes can be annoying. So I like to get rid of them. Earthy interface, you saw that on the title. Many of us are familiar with that. You'll see how it just kind of recolors the, the UI essentially. Um, I have a cat reskin here because I'll be using a cat as my farm animal because I am a cat person. Um, very much appreciate dog people, but I, I lean more towards cats. I have this Ellie's dig spot, which you'll see clearly. I'll make sure to point it out. It's just basically the worm. Sometimes I gloss over them and it upsets me. So this just makes it a bit clearer. Another framer, uh, framework mod. Uh, furniture adjustment. This is mainly for inside the house just to customize it a bit because I don't like how all the furniture is locked to a grid and it complicates, you know, like the rugs going under things. So that's what this one's really for. And I'll, I'll, I'll fiddle with it a little bit once we get in there. Um, this is this mod, the menu. GMCM, um, Greenhouse Entry Be Gone, that removes those little square tiles at the front of it because they look a little bit goofy. Um, infallible Fishing, because fishing is not my favorite content in the game. Um, I do bear with it and I do respect, you know, the time and effort put in. However, I just, you know, I get upset at the waste of energy when I constantly fail. So I'll put in the time and sometimes, you know, I've used this mod in um, a few previous playthroughs and I'll be on a fish for like five minutes. So there's a trade off, right? I won't fail the catch, but the catches will take me a long time. I am going to be using Margo in this playthrough, the module um, modular gameplay overhaul. I've basically left it as is um, standard. Ooh, one thing that I do want to change is I want to add taxes. So I, I don't really want to fiddle with things a little too much in Margo. I'd rather experience it how it was intended. So it's it's left how it is. Passable crops is basically walk through trellis with a few more perks, mainly quality of life. Like you can walk over 
um, forage and you can walk over fiber or weeds really is what it is so it's just more of a quality of life this is my way of getting around instead of just increasing my movement speed like crazy um, I love the seasonal characters it just kind of changes up their portraits and their sprites looks really great um, this makes the pine trees in winter have festive lights on them which I think is a nice little touch Skip intros, this is mainly when I'm loading the game just so I don't see the loading stuff and it loads a bit quicker. Another framework mod. This is gonna be the farm map we're using, which is Daisy and Nico's um, farm. So we'll make sure that I can show you that um, to see what this farm looks like. It is a bit, it's, I'd say it's a mid-sized farm. I've played on large farms before and they've just been too overwhelming. I feel so pressured to fill them all and then I just, it's, you know, there's just too much to work with. Um, and I haven't really experienced playing on a tiny farm yet, so that might be something I'm interested in the future. To do, mainly just leave myself reminders because I'm forgetful. I will be using UI Info Suite because it's basically just like Wikipediaing things and also for forgetful brains. Um, this is another one required by an additional mod that I'm going to be using, which I'll get to. So this is just a package one. I will be using the Vibrant Pastoral Recolor just because I like how it kind of desaturates um the vanilla colorings of the game a little bit it's also very reflective of where i live in the world and the seasons that i get here especially the fall time one i like how the grass is still green with all like the hues of yellows oranges and reds in the trees it's beautiful um, waterproof items because i get really upset when i cut a tree and all the wood goes into the water so basically it'll just look a little bit goofy when the water bounces or the items bounce on the water but it's just something that makes me happy wind effects just for you know a little bit more of an immersive experience and i have it set to be every day is a windy day just because it's super beautiful and then this is going to be the other big one paired with rapidax which is more building upgrades so as of recording this mod is still quite new um it has been updated a few times in terms of bug fixes and stuff but i did a playthrough kind of trying to see most of the content and i kind of ran into a few things so that's why you've noticed that I'm not, I'm missing out on a few mods here, just to hopefully prevent running into having to debug down the road. Um, I think some of it might've had to have done with a JSON shuffle, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, this is the pack. You can see it's pretty bare bones. Like I don't want to add in Stardew Valley Expanded into this one, um, or Riverside Village, or even East Scarp. I really want to focus on Raffadax for this and all that it has to offer. Um, these more building upgrades will make sense. I'll be sure to show it when, you know, things pop up, but it will mainly help with navigating Ravidax and um, the amount that it has to offer. There's also some fun immersive things here that kind of expand the story a little bit um, in terms of bundles and stuff that we'll be able to experience together. We'll see if I keep this one. I may have to remove it down the road if it gets a little bit too funky, but from what I was experiencing, there was portions of it that were good enough for me. Um, and due to this, they don't have any sort of reskinning for buildings itself. So that's why I'm not using any sort of building reskins. I'm just going to use the vanilla buildings and I'll make sure to paint them when applicable to begin with. We'll see if I change my mind. But yeah, that is the mod pack. So now let's see it in action. I can walk through it a little bit. Okay. Oh, a few other ones that aren't um, explicitly stated is I have a few um, content patcher mods, which just change um, the aesthetics. If there's a few other ones that pop up, I'll make sure to mention them. Like for example, the cat. I have a content patcher um, that reskins the cat. So I'm gonna be starting with the mirror because I have fashion sense. Um, for this playthrough, I'm gonna be naming this farm Hemlock. I'm probably gonna be naming all my farms on this channel Hemlock, just because I love naming things after trees, um, that nature oriented aspect. My character's name or the one who's telling the story's name is gonna be Seamus. And I actually didn't think about what Seamus's favorite thing will be. Hmm. Let's say grounding. Oh, sorry. I also have Discord on, so you may hear that from time to time. His favorite thing is grounding, which I will get into in a little bit. That's basically where you connect with the earth. Um, so for this, I'm not really going to worry too much about the hair, hair because it kind of... They all look pretty similar. I like the one with the part in the middle. Um, I am going to be trying to set these because I don't want to have to fiddle with them later in the wizard's house. It's not as simple with, um, with the, like, Sardew expanded and such. 
and I'm gonna make him kind of almost not like druidic in nature but a little bit of that with sentiments of like dark academia um, so that's my goal and he's gonna be a little bit reflective of me in real life try and find a hue that's not too dark to lose the details but it'll make sense in a little bit why I want it to be darker um, the pants colors just gonna darken that a bit not too worried about the boot colors because fashion sense will take care of that the shirt I am concerned about because I have a sleeves mod content patcher so basically I like the long sleeves because the arms bug me for the normal sprites so I do have to choose the shirt color because that kind of once it's set it's set um, normally I just do like a black one because then you can work around with the, the other portions so sunflower acres is its own separate farm type which is really cool i love the sprite she did such a fantastic job with this sprite um and i am going to be skipping the intro because if you're watching this video or this playthrough it's a modded playthrough so that means that you've probably watched this intro in your own vanilla playthrough or in other playthroughs so you can infer what's going to happen um i am going to keep the community center bundles normal I'm going to guarantee your one completable and the only reason is because the bulk of this playthrough isn't going to be within the vanilla components of the game. So this is going to be a stepping stone. Um, I'm not going to make the goal of completing it in year one, but it'll be nice to have access to everything. I'm going to keep the mine rewards normal just because Margo is going to change that already. I am going to turn spawning monsters off just because Margo does interesting things to the combat. I am going to change the profit margin to 75% just because I feel that it's so easy to make money in this game, especially with Raffidax, which introduces so much content. Um, I do want to have a little bit of difficulty, but not to the point of 25% just because that progresses the gameplay a little too slow. And then these are all things that we don't care about. So just make sure, yeah, got that, got the cat. And I think this is cat type 2, so it should show it. If not, then we're just going to deal with, you know, the vanilla type 2 cat. Cool. Let's go for it. Take a little bit here while it kind of populates all the mods. May have to go into the um, um, mod settings for a little bit just to set some of them, but I think it'll be okay. It's a nice thing about only running so many mods. I'm under 100 mods with the frameworks. It's at 97 mods with the frameworks there. So it's probably closer to like 70 mods maybe. And the game does run a lot smoother. When I was doing my mega modded series, you know, personal series with um, Expanded and Ridgeside and East Scarp and such. Oh my gosh, it took so long to load each of those days, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. So I don't have pause when game window is inactive, mainly just because if I'm looking something up on the wiki, I like the time to still progress because I'm usually waiting for a shop to open or something. Um, but yeah, then the rest of it, I'm going to have the music off because I'm just going to be playing my own stuff. I can fiddle with this a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about these ones too much. I can turn them up a bit, but we'll see after um, we go through a few days here. But yeah. So I like to have these this zoomed out every, you know, not too much, but yeah. Um, and then here, I just want to make sure I have all of these things checked off. Hide them basically once we do it. This is just a UI info suite. Sweet. So yeah, this is going to be roughly the size. You can see that my character now has its sleeves. Um, I think all of these are okay for now. I don't think I need to fiddle with any of these right now. I think they should be okay. Sweet. Okay, so one of the first mods I want to show, which is pretty awesome. Oh, did I keep my, did I keep it on here? No, I didn't. I took off cheats. That's good. Um, is moving your furniture around ever so slightly and that mod name is eluding my brain right now. I'm so sorry. Um, but it's actually quite simple. Where is that? Furniture adjustment. There we go. So how this works is you can just pick up. I'll just pick it all up because I'm going to move all of this. So I want to start with the rug and I want this to be kind of, do you see how you can't center it on the fireplace? So you basically put it down there and once you have it down, it was the last thing you selected, you use your number cat, um, number pad. And I'm sure you can, you know, obviously change the keys that is down to this if you have a keyboard that doesn't have the number pad. 
so you can actually center things so it's a little bit more tasteful you know a little bit more aesthetic so to speak oh wait i wanted to put that one down there i don't know it just looks a bit nicer same with like the bed right i'm not actually gonna put my bed in the corner or in the right against the door i'm just gonna put it right there and the nice thing about it too is like once you reposition some of this stuff like i'm gonna move this my this night table oops a little bit closer if i can is that if you put the stuff on top, it kind of follows where you placed it. I might move, no, I'll leave the TV there. I'm just gonna move it back. Yeah, this TV's notorious for taking up way too many spots, hey? Here we go. Looks much better, hey? Let me just rearrange my um, tools to the order that I enjoy. Yes, there we go. Okay. So next order of business is before we explore this farm is let's set up our character. Let's set up Seamus. So this is for just like custom casks. Unfortunately, we do get the recipe, but I'm not too worried about that. Um, this is letting us know about taxes. So Department of the Treasury Ferngill Revenue Service. Dear taxpayer, this letter is to inform you that your recent address change to Pelican Town, Stardew Valley has been filled and registered. All future correspondence will oh my goodness, all future correspondence will be directed to Hemlock Farm. We kindly remind you that federal income tax contributions are due end of day on the first of every season, which is terrifying, so we'll see how much damage we do. Um, for your convenience, your due obligations will be automatically deducted from your balance. If your balance is insufficient, you will be fined in accordance with section blah 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 of the Ferngill Revenue Code at the rate of 5% and a loan will be issued in your name um, with the Bank of Stardew, subject to the nominal interest fee of 100% per annum. So, I don't know, basically if you're poor, it'll just take money and then you have to deal with it and make money and then it will... I don't know, we'll see how this plays out. I'm excited. And again, left it at the standard. And then Laura D. Preto. I wonder if that's actually like the mod maker where that name came from. Executive Directress. Ooh, Fringle Revenue Service. Nice. Yeah, I'm excited to see how taxes play out. I like how it's just like, you know, it's so easy to get so rich in this game. So it'd be nice to have a little bit of, oh, look at the clipping right there. You know, layers in here. All right, and I heard someone new was moving into the valley and thought to offer a, a housewarming gift. I've included my old hand mirror with this letter, which should help with your fashion sense. If you ever lose it, you can buy another from Pierre's shop. Haley, cool, thank you, person who we haven't met yet. Probably one of the kindest things you'll do all year long for us. Cool. So I'm going to kind of customize my character a little bit. I have done this already, so it shouldn't take too long. It'll just take a little bit of finding everything that I want to find. Um, these are also mods that were not listed in the generic mod configuration menu, but they're all the fashion sense mods, so they list them up here if you want to search them up on Nexus. So this is the backpacks and bobbles one, which is pretty cool because it adds you know, actual backpacks and stuff. So I am gonna be using this backpack or a backpack because I like the idea of like, if you're adventuring, if you're farming, collecting this stuff, um, canonically having somewhere that, that it goes. Um, but I am gonna be adding in a cape as well. I can't remember which one I like. I think it's this one. We're gonna be making this more of a darker green. There we go. Might change that once I realize which one I wanted. The nice one, um, another one that we add. Oh, see, this is what I'm torn about is because I have this one too. Swords on the back, which are so cool. So I might be switching this one out because it's really cool running around with swords on. But I think I might be going with the backpack. Because I just like how it looks. I think this is the wrong cape too, because I like the ones that kind of cover your arms. Yeah, I like that. Okay, we'll stick with that for now, but then there is one other accessory that I wanted. Actually, it might be in hats. It's in hats. This might take a little bit. So these are all hairs that I was fiddling around with, but they're all very, um, you know, kind of like very feminine as fashion sense, unfortunately, goes, is that it's very strong and having you know a feminine presence but in terms of masculine or androgynous you have limited options so to speak it's 
really hard to see this color. I'm gonna just make this white so we can actually see what's going on. Cute. Yeah, hats and horns. This one was cute. I got this for like a few in here. Like these more of these um, like circlet ones. That's gonna be kind of the direction I am leaning towards, which ironically doesn't match the, look at this huge fungus one. Doesn't match the traveler's energy so much, but you never know, right? Might switch it up. My intention is to not change my look too much. That's not kind of like the play style I'm gonna be going for. So I think it's this one, this one I wanted. But now that I'm seeing this, I think that the cape's wrong. I'm sorry, I wasn't hoping to spend too much time on this. I think it's this actually, yeah. Okay, let me just change my boots because that's gonna bug me. Oh, that's actually a perfect color. Yay, that looks really good. So yeah, the hat is kind of out of place, but trying to find a hat that applies is difficult. And I could just use no hat. This is a bow on the back. Yeah, that you can't really see because I already have other things on my back. Oh no, I think it was that one actually. This one's, yeah, it was this one. Just a nice, simple, it's kind of like a, like a branch circlet that meets in the middle, but I like it because it's very like nature-based, you know, like almost like a druidic royalty aspect so that's what i like and we're gonna save this as seamus there okay we'll stick with this for now i think i've done glowing eyes and stuff in the past but i don't want to fiddle with this too much more so there we go there's my dude i don't like how hmm actually not yet because i don't like how this backpack looked like part of his head like this angle so I just choose a different one. Do the shovel one. Or the miner's bag, that'd probably be a good one. Actually, you know what, we're gonna do a bow since these aren't looking. There we go, look at that, a lava bow. Yeah, there we go, that's good. Okay, let's get down to business. So another mod that we're gonna see is this passable crops one, where it basically lets you just walk through um, the weeds, which is really nice. So right now my goal is to get 50 wood just to make a chest because I have four slots in my inventory currently, which is not okay. I'm not gonna worry too much about stomps. I'm gonna... So I have more grass and I have a wildflower grass mod as well. Um, mainly I was like looking at fall. It's always autumn, which is the season that I base everything off of. Cause that's why the grass looks a bit different cause I don't like just the regular green grass. Um, oh geez, I forgot that Margot changes the scythe's radius. That was a lot of weeds, like that was so far away. Look at it, it hit that one way up there, holy. And this is the regular scythe. I think the golden scythe does more. So my intention with this playthrough is to have episodes um, only one day at a time, just so they're a little bit more digestible. Like some of the content creators I've watched where they do it one episode at a time, it makes it a bit easier because even if they're like 17 minutes long, some of them are closer to half an hour, that means that you can actually get through an entire episode and it doesn't get disrupted at all, which is really nice. Um, there is merits to both of them, obviously. Um, let me just color this chest, this for tools. Just gonna put that in there. Might cut down another one for... No, I'll just put everything in here for right now, it's fine. Um, there are merits to the longer episodes, you know, like when they do like one week at a time or something and it's unedited and it's, you know, close to two hours long or whatnot, but I don't know, we all just live such busy, busy lifestyles that, you know, having things a bit more bite size, um, has it, oh, right, I forgot that I don't have crops anywhere. That's gonna bug me. Um, having things a bit more bite sized is nice. Like for example, one of my favorite things to do is to watch, you know, an episode of Daily Stardew in the morning when I'm drinking my coffee. And those, that's usually only like 15, 17 minutes. So 
Shout out to HodgePodge. Um, he's not like the most popular one in terms of just views and subscribers, but he has many hundreds of chapters of Stardew playthroughs, which are fantastic. And I don't know, he captures my intention a lot. I like his the conversations that he has and um, his perspectives on things. And I just, yeah, I like how he sets up his videos and his day to day. And he does release them on a daily basis. I don't know if that will be what happens here, but I will want to try and release them a bit consistent because, you know, it's always upsetting in this day and age when you're waiting for <laughs> some content to come out and it just isn't. But, you know, we all live, live our lives um, and get busy and such. So, okay, I'm going to take this and this with me. I'm going to go explore town. We're going to go and do um, some perusing around for some spring onions Ooh, wait before i do this actually do i have daily screenshots i do so i have daily screenshots which would be cool because maybe you can do a little time lapse at the end or i was thinking like after every month i can just make a little video um that shows kind of how the farm has changed over the month oh i didn't think about oh, i can't get out here pretty easy okay oh look at that our first sighting of raffidax which is a canary feather which is pretty cool. So I intentionally chose not to use look up anything to begin with. Um, and that's because I don't want to just like have it all handed to me. Raphidax is massive. It's absolutely massive. Um, you can't really see it right now. Like this looks very vanilla, but you do get crafting recipes. There's some building tweaks. There's everything. But the biggest thing is obviously in the collections. So we'll start with the simple ones. Fish, still the same. It's just vanilla, which for me is wonderful because I just, I said I'm not a, the biggest fishing fanatic, so that's fine. Artifacts, you know, museum stuff, all still the same um, status quo, which is nice. Food, there will be new additions here. Um, nothing too crazy though. Achievements, I'm not too sure actually how achievements go. I didn't really track achievements when I was doing my testing. But the biggest thing is going to be in your shipped items. Because Raphidax, not only does it have, you know, a strong grounding in ecology and, you know, the diversity of species out there, biodiversity essentially, you know, and like different representations of just like, you know, the fungi species, the mushrooms. Vanilla has like five different types of mushrooms. Raphidax exponentially increases that and also in what i had to google is the zymology or zimmergy which is basically the brewing so vanilla page but then if we look at that uh raffidax in a snapshot it not it has one essentially right because this is addition no wait this is still vanilla so one page two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five seven twenty eight around a breath thirty thirty one thirty two thirty three thirty four thirty five thirty six thirty seven thirty eight thirty nine forty forty one forty two forty three forty four the five yeah you get the message right it goes on and on and on and on and on and on for like over 50 60 something pages but like you can see here like these are wines these are meads these are porters whatever it's all heavily influenced in the brewing of the things you find and distilling them and you know making teas and such so you can see how this playthrough could be thousands of episodes long and that's why i'm kind of gonna approach it as like we're gonna go as we go we're gonna take a usually a slower pace and not rush through things too much because especially just looking in the actual content of the mod like you know on the back end of it there are very, very specific requirements. Hey, thanks for the mirror. Um, very specific requirements for a lot of these items that you have to find. Um, I don't want to spoil it too much. I wanted to, to kind of discover it as it pops up. Uh oh, uh oh, well, this isn't a good seed at all. Wow, no spring onions on day one. Um, but yeah, I want us to kind of experience it as we encounter these items because some of them are very unique in nature um, and very cool in terms of what they do and what they help out with. Oops, I also forget that Margo does that too. You like it adds in like this cool like sliding animation. So my goal for right now is I'm not 
I don't want to really meet everyone. That's not really goal. The egg festival can do that. You can see it's vanilla. Um, I'm not too worried about progressing my journal that way. Um, there are a few new additions to the list, which are here. That's interesting why he's up there, probably alphabetical and down here. So these are spirits, um, which we will meet as we kind of progress through the vanilla story. Hi, Vincent. Oh, I was scared I was going to hit the garbage. Um, and we'll meet them as we go. And they all have very unique interests um, and offerings, I, I'll say. But that's, that's as much as I'm going to say. I'm going to see if there's an artifact spot down here. Ooh, is there not? Oh, I have to adjust the ambient volume. Those waves are loud. Wow, I'm not finding an artifact spot anywhere. That's a bummer. Let's see what other forage I can find here. But yeah, those those spirits essentially are um, very much the backbone of this mod pack, which we will, I love the wind effects, which we will see as we progress. We starting off the day strong with good luck to Hi Abigail. Cool, yes, I am new. Um, in terms of what partner I will end up with, I haven't really given it too much thought, nor am I extremely picky. Oh, there's no rock there. I'm not, I'm not super picky um, in terms of the marriage candidates. For me, it's more so kind of a canonical approach in terms of what does their personality bring to Seamus, you know, our... Um, academic druidic adventurer here um, in terms of his partner and also just what is their spouse room look like too that's a and their patio <laughs> that's a big thing for me again just on the aesthetic side of things hi demetrius um but other than that is i'm not too picky they're all they all have their own perks and wonderful kind of quirky moments and such so oh, there's still no artifacts but hey i had to look around on my actual farm for one so this is another addition here too, is the trash is very much expanded in this game. And we'll see how that plays out. Hey Linus, I'm so sorry that there was garbage right beside your little area here. Um, we'll see what we can end up doing with this trash because from my initial kind of testing and browsing of this mod is everything is intentionally added. Nothing is just there to just be another item, if that makes sense. It all has a purpose or... <laughs> should say multiple purposes, honestly. Um, oh, we're trapped. Oh, we're really trapped. All right. Wow, that's interesting. All right. Oh, and there's even a branch on the thing. Tape. Well, time to waste an hour going around. <laughs> Unforeseen. But I don't know. I'm not too upset about it. I was looking at doing a, have I actually officially met Robin? I think so in the intro you meet Robin, don't you? Yeah, so I don't need to. Should I hang around for Sebastian? No, I'm not too worried about meeting him. I'll meet him at the Egg Festival. It's on spring 13. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not rushing anything here. So I'm sorry if that's not your style and you want to kind of get through the content and see everything. Um, hopefully you'll, join later down in the the playthrough so you can just skip a few videos and oh nice of daffodil and alex oh can i get him with my slow uncaffeinated um yeah you can just skip a few episodes here or there you know for the the boring minutia as we get to it but I also want to just experience things and, and really dial it back. Like I was taking some time browsing through the YouTube channel of just like, you know, the Let's Play um, Stardew Valley videos that are out there and like, you know, the the multi-episodic ones and oh, nice, sweet. So now I can kill myself, which is good um, in game. Um, and so many of the, the modded playthroughs, like, it's just people obviously experiencing it the way they wanted to, but it was like such a fast pace. Like their characters were 
zooming around the map and they were using chests anywhere and um you know like the auto storing which again has its merits i've definitely had my fair share of playthroughs like that too but at least for me personally speaking whenever i do those playthroughs they last like a year maybe two years before i'm completely bored from them because you know i think the the true value and enjoyment in stardew is the struggle right it's always that's why people do so many of these like 100 day let's plays videos is because it's it's struggling through this material, which is really what is the fun part. Okay, I need to change something too, because this, I'm just shipping these for the shipment. Receive, um, achievement, there we go. But yeah, it's really in the struggle. I was watching a video on Disney Plus the other day. Um, I can find the title of it later, but it was basically about like King Arthur. Is this, yeah, yes, that is, those crickets are way too loud for me. So now it's probably only me who can hear that. And there was a quote by the character playing Merlin. And one line he said, which is, you know, it's a typical line that we hear a lot of people say, a lot of wise elders and such, you know, um, older generations in our lives and whatever. Even in a lot of people's workplaces is, the quote went like this. The most worthwhile part, my friends, is seldom the easiest. Right, it's the idea of like climbing the mountain and, you know, progress is an uphill battle, what have you. But even in a simple, you know, low-key game like this, a mellow game like this, it's so true that, you know, when you find the most enjoyment, that's when you're in the middle of it, you're struggling just to get through it. It's not when you're, you know, selling your 700 bottles of ancient fruit wine and making over a million dollars in one night. Like, there is, there is a certain style that you can play with that, but... I don't know, I want to try and experience this game a little bit different. We'll see if I can do that. We'll see if my patience lasts, um, as I know is a true test for so many of us, especially nowadays. But yeah, this isn't the best farm tour either. I'm so sorry. I have no glow rings. It's super dark, um, probably squinting away. I know whenever content creators do this, I'm always trying to see and it's a little harder because it's obviously not full screen desktop mode, especially if I'm watching it on my phone. So this is just, I won't, I'll try not to spend too much time at night, um, especially at the beginning here. I am going to be doing a little bit of farm cleaning with um, this energy that I have left though, because especially because I leveled up just in this main area, because I'm going to be trying to plant some more crops here and such in the next little bit just to level up my farming skill. So I'll just grab these out really quick. Just clear up all this, like, the little debris that just, like, you know, inhibits the pathing. Um, where was that other one? Up to the top. It's nice that I have the passable crops, because now I don't really need my scythe. Y'all, I promise I'm just as blind as you right now. I wasn't sure if that was a rock or a stump, so... Nice thing about Daisy uh, Nico's mods is that she the architecture of the maps is that she places in these lights and you know i like the fences and all these um immersive concepts that she has and then interpretation because it adds a little bit more life to the farm a little bit more that it was you know previously lived in so to speak there we go that's a twig that i wanted that it's like you know we inherited this farm um and it wasn't just a blank slate even though I still to this day do feel that the standard farm is, you know, my favorite because it's just, it's so customizable. You can take it any direction. But I love also experiencing what all these other um, mod creators made, um, seeing their own inspiration and creativity as well. And these ones that just add a little bit more depth, you know, to the world. Um, how much more energy do I have? I need to remember I'm level one so it's two energy per hit here is that okay that is how much energy i have eight four six four two i just don't want to get sluggish because yeah it's 10 after one. Oh my gosh it's 10 after one we gotta run come on seamus make your way back you're adventuring too much right now my friend okay cool we made it okay I'll put that stuff away grab that for tomorrow for day two ah look at this this looks so lovely 
All right, well, that was day one on Hemlock Farm. I'm sorry that I rambled. I appreciate you listening to my introduction and, you know, selection in terms of mod choice and approach here. Um, this will be a journey that we're going to be doing together. I'm going to make so many mistakes and faults here and there, um, but I am very much not new to Stardew as well. So I do have, you know, more or less a path that I will be following until we start to get into, um, you know, the wealth and depth that is the Raphidax mod, because I'm sure that will be a new experience for so many of us. And again, one of the reasons why I wanted to make this is because it hasn't been overly explored to my understanding aside from Meraki which may just be my YouTube algorithm showing me that one but who knows I was watching um, Emma Emolution and she was saying that she may be interested in doing a Raphidax playthrough which I am so excited for um, don't know how much you look at smaller content creators Emma but please do Raphidax I will be eating it up oh my goodness but that's enough rambling day one of year one Hemlock Farm in Raphidax style is done this is just the beginning of the journey of Seamus, our druidic, um, you know, scholar, essentially. That's what I should call him, a druidic scholar. <laughs> Let's pair those things together. All right, my friends, until next time, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.